Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be an anti-haul video. So I'm going to basically be scrolling through Trend Moods Instagram and looking at the new makeup releases because I just was really in the mood to film an anti-haul because I haven't gone on Trend Mood and seen a lot of the new makeup releases recently. So I'm just going to be sort of scrolling through, pointing out some things I'm either interested in, which the point is an anti-haul and... I think I also kind of want to talk myself out of some products because there are some products I already see on here that I am very interested in trying. So the point of this video is pretty much to talk myself out of buying any more makeup because I am on a low buy this year. I'm being very conscious of my makeup purchases. I did do a low buy last year, so I do have a bunch of low buy, no buy content if you want to go check out that playlist on my channel. But this is just sort of me going through the new makeup releases and showing you guys sort of what I'm interested in while also trying to talk myself out of buying anything. So let's just go ahead and get started. So the first thing I see on here is Fenty Beauty lipsticks, which I first saw this and I was like, oh, it's Fenty Beauty. I haven't really purchased anything from them in a while. I have really liked all the products that I've tried from them though, so I am kind of interested to try some of their newer stuff and a lot of their stuff I haven't tried. So these lipsticks do look really beautiful. It's pretty much like a nude collection. They say it's high pigment, low maintenance, reds and neutrals for all. And they describe it as a semi-matte creamy formula that hugs lips with a smooth plush texture and long lasting iconic wear. So it is semi-matte. I like that it's not completely matte. The main reason I'm interested in these is because it does look like they have some really beautiful nude shades. I feel like I have so many lipsticks in my collection, specifically lip glosses. I don't tend to reach for lipsticks very often. I mostly just wear glosses, so I feel like I definitely don't need to add any more lip products to my collection. So although there are some really beautiful nude shades in this collection, I feel like I'm pretty easily able to restrain myself from purchasing these because I know I don't need to bring any more lip products into my collection. I do also see this new Kosas release. So I've been seeing that it is the year of skin and a lot of companies are coming out with skin tints, concealers, and complexion products. So this is the Revealer Skin Improving Foundation with SPF 25 from Kosas. And I have sort of been intrigued by their face oil, but I've heard some really great things about that and some really not so great things about that. But this does also have like skincare benefits and I like that it has SPF in it. So this does definitely intrigue me. I'm definitely going to wait to hear some reviews. I'm not just going to go ahead and purchase it. I also know I don't really wear foundation very often these days. I mostly just stick to concealer to add some coverage where I want it. So I know I don't need to add any more foundations to my collection. So this, this one isn't too difficult to talk myself out of. Kosas is definitely a brand I would like to try more from though, so it's a little hard to restrain myself. Another one we have that I'm very, very interested in as well, and this is also a newer brand that I want to try, is the LYS Beauty Concealer. This is their triple fix, triple fix brightening concealer. So they also have their foundation, which has gotten really great reviews, and I really want to try that foundation. So obviously I'm interested to hear reviews on this concealer. I'm not super enthralled by it because obviously I don't necessarily know if it's good. I usually wait to hear reviews on pretty much everything before I purchase it. So again, this one, I do really want to try L LYS Beauty, which is why it is tempting me, but I'm just going to wait to hear some reviews about this. And same thing with a lot of these products because I haven't really heard anything about most the majority of these products so I feel like they're not super tempting in the way that they're so hyped up that I really really want them it's more just so they're tempting in the way by the way they look and the way that I'm just sort of intrigued either by the brand or by the specific product a brand I feel like we haven't heard a lot from or hasn't come out with new products in a while is Dose of Colors and they released this Valentine's Day collection it has Heart Cheeks Cream Blush Sticks. There, it looks to be two of them. 
then also a quad that's an eyeshadow palette and then two opposites attract two in one lip pairs so it's like a matte liquid lipstick and then a gloss which one of those shades looks really pretty the more nude gloss does look really really beautiful this quad also looks really pretty too I feel like I would like to try some more products from Dose of Colors. I feel like they're a little bit underrated. I don't hear a ton about Dose of Colors, but this is just a brand that intrigues me. And this release, I feel like, is a little bit unique. There's the unique two-in-one lip pair where it's like a liquid lipstick and a gloss in one. And that does intrigue me, although I literally never wear liquid lipstick, so I feel like I just don't need that product. And then we have the eyeshadow palette, the really beautiful quad, which does look really nice and it is just more wearable sort of pinky tone shade so I feel like I don't need that they are pretty neutral even though it's a beautiful palette I would probably really enjoy it if I had it in my collection but I feel like I just don't need to add more eyeshadows to my collection and then the cream blush sticks I don't really reach for cream blushes or cream blush sticks I more so reach for cream blushes that are in like a pan form so I'm just not really interested in those even though this collection does look really beautiful and I feel like it's very well done. I just, I know I won't or most likely will not end up purchasing anything from this collection. Urban Decay also released this concealer which I think is really really interesting. It is called the Stay Naked Quickie Concealer and I feel like they have obviously that whole stay naked line that they're just sort of running with. This looks to be, I mean, it's a quickie concealer. The packaging is very interesting. I would assume it's a little bit more lighter coverage. I don't know if I'm correct in assuming that, but it does look very interesting. It looks a little bit like a drugstore packaging to me. Like some of it looks high end, the gold details on it and the lid, but on the lid, it looks to be this little brush applicator. So I'm interested to hear people review this. I'm not necessarily interested to purchase it myself, but this does look like a, I don't know, it might be a hit, it might be a miss from Urban Decay. I feel like Urban Decay is one of those brands where it's either a hit or a miss depending on who you are, like you either love it or hate it. Another brand I've really wanted to try is Sigma. They released these four Hydro Melt Lip Masks. So another brand I've also really just wanted to try some products from, I don't believe I have anything from them, is Sigma. They released these four Hydro Melt Lip Masks and they look similar to the Laneige Lip Masks in a way. They do look like they have a little bit of pigment to them and they look beautiful. I don't necessarily purchase like higher end lip masks or, or lip balm type of products. So I don't know if I would end up purchasing this. They are $22 each, which is pretty expensive. I think the Laneige ones are around $20. So it's kind of even with those. I'm not sure about the amount of product in them. These do look really beautiful. I just probably wouldn't end up purchasing them because I feel like you can find just as good a product at the drugstore for a cheaper price. It is just a lip mask, so I don't feel like you need to pay that high-end price for them. Another brand I really do want to try is Ace Beauté. Technically, I've already tried them. I got a couple products in a BoxyCharm from them, and I really, really love them. They came out with the... So they had a restock of the Tropical Vibes eyeshadow palette, which is really, really beautiful and I've kind of had my eye on, but it's a very grungy palette, so I'm not sure how much use I would actually get out of it. And with the restock, they released these four glimmer shadows and one of these specifically is standing out to me for sure. I believe it's like the, it has the names right here. It's the shade Fan Palm, which is a really, really weird name, but it is the metallic olive green shadow. So it's the more grungy green tone in this sort of quad of singles. And these are very, very similar to the Super Shock Shadow formula. The two products that I got from BoxyCharm from Ace Beauté are these little single shadows, obviously in different shades. And this grungy, gr grungy green, <laughs> And this grungy green shadow is definitely standing out to me and looks so beautiful. So I would be very, very interested in trying that. And this Tropical Vibes eyeshadow palette does also intrigue me, even though it's not technically a new release. It's just a restock. I wouldn't be mad if I had this in my collection. So 
This is one I feel like I could put on like a wish list. I feel like it's a very unique palette. Some shades I don't have anything like in my collection. So maybe I will add that to my wish list just as like, I feel like it would be a very special gift. I don't necessarily want to purchase it for myself, which you may think like, if you don't want to purchase it for yourself, why would you ask for it as a gift? But that's not really how my brain works. Like I feel like I don't want to necessarily spend the money on this myself, but if I got it as a gift, it would be very special to me and it is very unique to my collection. So I am very interested in this palette and definitely that olive green single shadow. So this is one I'm kind of struggling to talk myself out of because I have been really into greens lately, but I do plan on purchasing some single shadows in green tones. So maybe that will help me sort of talk myself out of this more, I guess, technically by purchasing other shadows. But those I do plan on purchasing from Give Me Glow Cosmetics. It's just their quad of greens. I forget what it's called. But I did talk about it in a previous video in my wish list, my realistic makeup wish list video. So go check that out if you want to hear sort of what's on my wish list for each category of makeup. But anyways, I'm getting way off track. This is one I'm not really able to talk myself out of right now. It is very beautiful, but... I also feel like I don't need singles because I don't reach for them very often and I don't need any more eyeshadow in my collection. So I guess technically I am talking myself out of it. Another palette that looks really, really beautiful. It gives me Natasha Denona love palette vibes, but like better. And this is from Beauty Bay, which I've kind of been intrigued by their palettes because they make these pretty big palettes, which also, I'm not really interested in big palettes because I feel like I just don't use all of the shades in them. So that's something that's kind of holding me back and allowing me not to get so enthralled in this palette that I actually want to purchase it. So this one I'm pretty easily able to talk myself out of because it is such a large palette, but it is definitely very, very beautiful. And again, I wouldn't be mad if I had it in my collection. I feel like I do have some of these tones already in my collection, so it's not super special. So therefore I'm, I'm not like, it is a beautiful palette. And if you don't have tones like that in your collection, I think it would be great. And the quality of Beauty Bay I've also heard is really good. The quality of their eyeshadows specifically. So I would like to try a Beauty Bay palette at some point, but I don't think this is the one. Then we also have this new M Cosmetics release, which is I feel like the more, the most neutral sort of release they've done, even though all their re all their releases are pretty wearable shades. I mean, they have like Faded Clementine, which is just a bit more orange. They have the other one that's a bit deeper Then they have their original M Cosmetics Magic Hour little palette, which is again, a very neutral palette. I feel like that one's leaning more sort of pinky tones. This one is just like very neutral in the middle type of tones, I feel like. And they did also come out with a lighter palette and a deeper palette, which I do really like that they sort of created these two sides to the palettes and these different depths within the palettes and within the blushes and also within the lip products in this collection. So as a whole, I really, really love how this collection looks and I do eventually want to try M Cosmetics. I pretty much want to try like one of every single one of their products. So I'm kind of stumped by their brand overall because I've heard great things about pretty much every single one of their products. So I'm like, I don't know how to like prioritize which products I actually want to try from them. I just want to try everything. So I feel like they're a brand that's a little bit overwhelming in the way where I want to try everything from the brand. Even though they don't have a ton of products, they don't have a, a ton of different types of formulas. I just want to try everything from the brand because I feel like the colors and shades that they come out with as well are always so beautiful. So even though I want to try maybe this one formula from them, I can't choose a shade that I want to try because they're all so beautiful, I feel like. So this brand is one I want to try eventually but it may end up being one of these palettes. I probably don't need an eyeshadow palette, so I feel like I'd more so lean towards trying maybe their lip products, which I feel like are a little bit more unique. In this collection, there are two eyeshadow palettes, two blushes, and then two of their tinted lip luminizers or lip cushion tinted lip luminizers, which is a formula I'm really intrigued to try because I feel like it's a little bit more unique. So anyways, overall, I do really want to try M Cosmetics. I just, I don't see myself purchasing from them 
anytime soon and because they do come out with very neutral products it's not necessarily in a way it's not the most unique like i probably have similar tones to these products in my collection so that just also kind of steers me away because now I feel like my collection is so curated where I'm really looking for those more unique tones and specific shades that I want. I don't necessarily want like, I don't necessarily want to add more everyday wearable shades to my collection, if that makes sense. Next up, let's talk about this Urban Decay palette. I first saw that and I was like, ooh, that's a little bit different. And I do kind of like the color story of it, especially those greens, because I've been obsessed with greens lately. Not even, I guess I am wearing greens on my lids today, but like not even actually wearing greens, but just the thought of wearing greens and looking at greens in a palette, I feel like it just looks so beautiful. So this is the Wild Greens eyeshadow palette. It's a very different format for Urban Decay. It is square pans, not like their normal naked palette sort of format. So I feel like this would have almost looked better in a naked palette just to sort of like from a collector's point of view, which is not me at all, I have one Urban Decay palette, but from a collector's point of view, I would have liked this to be in their normal sort of naked Urban Decay iconic format because I feel like it would just go with the brand a little bit better and almost go with all their other palettes a little bit better, if that makes sense. I don't know, I just feel like this palette may have done better if it was in that format, to me at least. Let me know what you guys think about this product and also any of the other products that I'm talking about in this video today. For me, this palette does look really beautiful. I really love the greens in here. I'm not obsessed with super warm tones like that, but paired together with the greens, they do look really nice. I just, I don't think I need to add this to my collection. It's not something I feel like I would end up wearing a lot. We also have these Makeup by Mario lip products that came out and we're getting back to like the beginning of January. So these aren't like technically brand new. I mean, they're still pretty new to the market, but these are the Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Serum from Makeup by, Mar Makeup by Mario. And I actually recently watched one of Kaki's videos. I believe she compared these to the M Cosmetics lip cushion formula and she said they were very very similar so that makes me very interested to try these lip products and I do also want to try a lot of Makeup by Mario's products in general so this just makes me even more intrigued in the brand and makes me want to try more from the brand again Makeup by Mario is another brand where I'm like I kind of just want to try everything I mean for him I feel like there's for his brand I feel like there's more products that stand out to me. They don't necessarily all look super appealing to me because obviously different makeup products are sort of suited for different types of people depending on what you like in your makeup. So there are definitely some products of his that stand out more so that I want more than others. So Makeup by Mario is definitely a brand that I do want to try relatively soon or at least at some point i haven't purchased any makeup products from him and there are a lot that stand out to me but again these lip products because i've heard they're similar to the m cosmetics lip cushion i'm kind of interested in them but then again i also haven't tried the m cosmetics lip cushion formula so that kind of want to makes me purchase that kind of makes me want to purchase from m cosmetics even more I think this is going to be the last thing I talk about because I don't want this video to be too long, but this is more so beauty news rather than a new release, but Fenty Beauty is coming to Ulta, so I'm really, really excited about that because I kind of talked a little bit in this video about trying some more Fenty Beauty products, and a lot of their products do get really good reviews, and I've heard a lot of great things about them, so... I may potentially end up trying some Fenty products in the future. They're not necessarily at the top of my wish list right now, but I'm really excited that they're going to be at Ulta and just a little bit more accessible because I do prefer to shop, to shop at Ulta rather than Sephora. Also, it's just better because you can buy your drugstore and high-end products in one place rather than going to Sephora and ending up accidentally spending like $500, I feel like Ulta is a lot better because they do have that versatility and so many different brands and products. So I'm really excited about that beauty news. And let me know what you guys are excited the most for in terms of new releases. Also, let me know down below if there's anything 
in this video that I didn't mention that you are really excited for. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It is fun kind of talking through these new releases and just giving you guys my thoughts. I'd really like to hear your thoughts on these products as well. So if you did enjoy this, make sure to give it a thumbs up. I do post new videos three times a week. So if you want to see more from me, make sure to subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notified every time I post. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.